Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo Franchise Mode Let's Play. We're gonna dive right back into Elite Zoo South. And just really quickly before we do, I want to mention, those of you that have been commenting that it still throws you off to hear me say South as opposed to North, I just want you to know, you're not alone. Every time I sit down to record, I have to remind myself, Party, remember, South, remember, South. And every time as I'm about to say the word, I have to like take a second to check myself. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to say you're not alone. Anyway, on that note, let's go ahead and dive on in to Elite Zoo South. I am really excited for today's episode because I'm going to hopefully successfully <laughs> execute a drastic step. The last time I did something like this, I would say this is somewhat similar. The last time I did something like this was uh, way back in Elite Zoo North, for those of you that watched, you'll understand the reference, um, but uh, even for those of you that didn't, there was at one point in the playthrough uh, in the season, fairly late in the season in fact, that I basically said, you know what, let's do something drastic. And for those of you that did watch, I'm referring to Formosan Falls, where we literally just dug up a huge hole in the ground and, and worked around it, and I was quite pleased with how that ended up. And I felt like that huge step, that leap of faith, uh, was a big driving force in what made that area so special. And that's part of what I have planned today. So as you can imagine, I'm pretty excited to try and execute it. Uh, I, I Hopefully the thumbnail has given a bit of a sneak peek of the idea. And if I'm completely honest, I'm not sure if it's something that can be executed in this biome. Um, how I have it in my head, at least at the beginning of this uh of this, of this rambling of mine, I guess. But we're certainly going to try. We're certainly going to try. I'm, I'm super pumped for it. And even if it doesn't work out uh, perfectly as I have it in my head right now, I'm sure I'll, well, I hope I'll be able to uh, work around the limitations of the space and uh, and get the job done all the same. I, I am really excited though. Uh, and, and I hope you all will be as well. I hope you all are as well. And again, as always, if you are enjoying the series and you would like to see it continue, Please don't hesitate to keep letting me know by leaving a like and a comment down below, folks. It makes a massive difference in how I approach content on the channel, what I do more or less of, how I go about doing it. And as you hopefully very well know by now, I do read through all the comments and uh, take a look at everything you all have to say and how I should allow it to impact my approach to things, uh, what I should adjust, what I should do more or less of, etc, etc. You all know the drill by now. And I just want to clarify, just never hesitate to give me feedback. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, a big part of this, of course, is... Everybody should be having fun. Uh, it should be entertaining. It should be interesting. Uh, we should be exploring things that people are interested in exploring. At least that's my personal approach to things. So if you know if you'd like to see more of a thing or less of a thing, or you'd like to see things a little differently, let me know in the comments. I'll try and accommodate everybody. But but obviously you know when you know you ask ten people a question, five will say one thing, another five will say the exact opposite. So I do my best to try and juggle and you know hit hit all the notes and at the same time make sure that I'm having a good time as well because. I think that's, and I think y'all will agree, that's an important part of uh, <laughs> of the whole experience too. But uh, but yeah, so don't hesitate at all to leave, you know, your thoughts, opinions, feedback, whatever it might be in the comments. Uh, and actually some of the feedback I've received recently has really, uh, like, it's like adrenaline straight to the heart. I've got some really exciting plans for the upcoming episodes that I cannot wait to execute, starting with today's session. Uh, now, let's, let's get down to business. There's going to be, oh my god, you're so tiny. Oh, I didn't notice how... Literally, I thought that was a turd. <laughs> uh, I thought that was a turd. I was just, I was like, okay, let's talk about our... On the topic of which, yep. Uh, I was just like, yeah, okay, I, let's talk about our kangaroos. It's been a bit of a problem for the last little while. I've been ignoring it. And then I, like, peripheral, even though it's right here, I was just like, oh, that's not a turd. Such a cutie. Oh my god, they're so adorable. They're so adorable. Uh, anyway, sorry, I digress. Um, it's been pointed out that I'm being a little too, uh, laissez-faire about, um, uh, the, the, the ratios and stuff like that. And you're absolutely right. Uh, it, it, it's not that difficult for me to just go ahead and type in kangaroo, look over here and see that it says a group size is two to 10, one male, nine females. One male makes it very clear what we need to do over here. I think Guru Mara is the one who needs to go because Guru Mara has the one poor, like not poor, middling stat, let's call it. Unfair to call a 58% poor. Um, and Yonga over here is top tier, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, all high quality stats. Oh my god, look at that. They're eyeing each other for like that's what it looks like, right? Is it just me or, or do they look like it's a like it's a we're in a western right here? 
Yeah, you draw his pistol. I'm gonna cut to this side. Draw your pistol. Oh, it totally looks like they're setting up for a duel. I can't get over that, but there won't be a duel over here. Guru Mara, you're gonna go ahead, despite being the alpha, for the sake of good genetics, and not just that, but also for the sake of avoiding inbreeding. You go to the Trade Center. Thank you very much. And I hope, sincerely, that nobody here is on contraceptives. You are. Let's get you off the contraceptives, because with Yonga, you'll be fine. Janali will be fine as well. I might need to get some more females in, actually. It's been mentioned before. Uh, maybe not a bad idea. Maybe not a bad idea to start things off with that. Uh, again, uh, hopefully I mentioned this. If I didn't, I'll mention it right now. Ooh, hello. For 400 conservation credits? Ooh, hello also. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Hang on a second, hang on a second. Not what I was... You know, it's not that much of a difference. And they are, they, they've bonded. I can't do that. I can't do that. Let them, let, let Remedios and Manuel be the, be the pair. These are pretty good potential results. These are pretty good potential results. These are just fine. These are excellent. No, I, yeah, come on. It's okay. It's okay. They're, they're, they're happily, quote unquote, married or paired or whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to rip that apart. I'm no, I'm no, I'm no, sh I'm no home, home wrecker. I'm no shell wrecker. Oh God. Is that the word? Um, but yes, I was actually, ooh, hello. Okay, come on, gotta stop getting distracted. Uh, I was here looking for kangaroos. And that is what I will focus on now, red kangaroo. There we go, cool. Female red kangaroo, Yindi over here, or Arika. Ooh, 4,700 though. I think I'd rather take Yindi, just a little bit, a little bit worse. Hira over here, hmm. Kanga 4. That was a good stat, 7,500, that's a lot. I'm trying to be a bit more conscious about my conservation credits. Maybe I maybe I shouldn't have to be. Longevity is a little low over here, but with Yonga, decent results. And with well, Kurumara's not going to be there. It'll be Yonga. Those are those are those are decent results, I would say. Decent potential results. Size firmly set at uh, at this point. Very little room for wiggle. Let me see Yonga here. Not bad. Not bad. Indy will be gone soon if I don't act quickly. How much of a difference do those hundreds make? Ooh, okay. Okay, they do make a difference. Arika. Arika, Arika, 4,700. That's not too bad, I guess. I have a bunch of animals in the trade center that I need to trade out, which I intend to do maybe next session. I don't know. May, may, might not be a bad idea to do it next session. Fine. Arika, let's go ahead and get you. There's our female, a new female kangaroo. Go ahead and drop you off. Quarantine. Get that done, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll put her in over here. Okay, so that's that sorted out. We've got a couple things sorted out already. I need to go over to. We got the floating camera done. Yep, yep, yep. All right, a couple more things, and then I think I interrupted myself again while I was going to explain the plan for the day. Step number one is management stuff. Step number two, we're going to look at an animal in detail, the new animal that we're going to be adding today. Step number three is a time lapse to build its space. And then step number four is a bit more management stuff to round off the episode. That is today's plan. Uh, but a couple things to do over here before we start talking about the animal. Um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for construction. I'm looking for fog. Not fog, not mist. Smoke? Hmm, I don't know if smoke is the right call. Let's go ahead and unpause so we can actually see it. But just to add a bit more mystery to the space, hmm, yeah, that looks like a fire. I think mist is what we want. Mist huge. Yeah, pop one of these down. Yeah, just running around in circles over here. Might want to nudge that over a little bit. It's the 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 fact that it fades as you get closer to it is a little um confusing, I guess. There we go. Kind of works. Want to raise you up or something like that? A little bit. Put you in the middle. That works, I think. Come through. There we go. Yep. 
Oh, look at the, look at the, like, the rim lighting on that. Quite like it, quite like it. Alright, cool. You come through, beautiful space. Yep, okay, great. Pause it again. Oh yeah, it was just for the, uh, the visual effects over there. Um, actually... Yeah, you know what, the time of day is perfect for... I would say it's more or less perfect for a time lapse. Hmm. Let's go ahead and set it to noon. Uh, let's just, we'll, let's play it safe. I want to make sure we're able to see everything clearly. <laughs> we are stuck in this eternal day. This one day loops over and over and over again as you continue to uh, develop the uh, the zoo. Okay, so, sorry. Um, that's the mist effect over here done, which I think does definitely add to the mysticism of the area. Huh? And I wanted to also get... Uh, right. Names down. So... First of all, I gotta figure out where I want to put these names. That was a good spot. And that's a good spot. Okay, sure. So, first of all, uh, I mean, I got so many wonderful name suggestions, as I always do. Uh, it is always a tough time to select names. Um, and it really helps me when people leave comments, and then those comments get comments or likes and things like that. It really gives me a, a good, um, a good uh, indication of what people are liking what people are interested in so based off of that and my own uh, personal tastes and stuff as well of course i make my selections i feel like this needs to be large actually going with a large g yeah hmm yeah let's try this let's try this maybe not the large over here pop you down over here there we go uh you can guess what that word is maybe hmm like you lined up to this, please. We'll have to rotate rotate it along the rock still. There was actually one uh, there was one exchange in the comments that I just want to touch on because I thought it was uh, hilarious. Um, one of the name suggestions that was uh, actually high up on my list at first was uh, uh, oh I forget it exactly. It was like Galapagos Garden or Galapagos Garden, something along those lines. And uh, I was totally I was on board for that. That was one of my top picks. Uh, and uh, until last session, more or less, um, and, and a comment, <laughs> there was a comment in response to it that very nicely reflected exactly what changed my opinion, too. Oh, it was just like, um, not much of a garden, is it? It's just like, yeah, these, 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 these tortoises really don't like um, <laughs> greenery, apparently. So lesson learned. Uh, and that was definitely a deciding factor in, uh, in, in the name over here as well. Gala, what am I? Gala, Gala Go? No. Party, you gotta spell this right. Galap. Ah, uh, there we go. Galapa. Uh, ghost. Go in there. These rocks, man. There we go. Galapa. Uh, gotta get the S planted properly. Oh, come on now. Hmm, I gotta fix this. Glad I. Scooched in there to see how much of a problem this was, how badly it was sticking out. Go like this. Galapagos. Galapagos. I always feel like the S should be silent. Galapago. You know? I don't know. It just feels. Sounds nicer. Maybe that is what it's supposed to be. I don't know. Now I'm, now I'm second guessing everything I say. There we go. Galapagos. Oh. Maybe, maybe there should have been a time lapse. I was expecting this to be a lot uh, swifter than this. My apologies. There we go. Nudge you in a little bit too, buddy. There we go. Pull you over a bit. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, Galapagos. Where are we? Get the R in here nicely. Yeah. I really hope I'm spelling this correctly. I think I am. Fairly sure I am. Rot. Come on. Works a lot smoother when uh, one of the letters actually line up. There we go. Grotto. Not blaming the game, by the way. The game's absolutely right in how it's uh, doing all this construction stuff. I just didn't realize how much these uh, plants were going to get in the way. That's all on me, though. There we go. There we go. Galapagos Grotto. Oh, lower this a little bit. I like the name. References the uh, the train and everything. It's got a good uh, alliteration to it. And to match the alliteration over here, again, this name was uh, 
I, it's always so hard to pick. There are always so many good names. Um, but uh, but yeah, this was uh, this was this was this was a solid suggestion. Galapagos Grotto, Galapagos Grotto, and say that ten times real fast. Playing on my love of alliterations, and not to be left behind. We have the flip side over here. I wonder if I can fit the name in this area. Uh, this, or do I want to put it higher up? Oh, decisions, decisions. Yeah, you know, let's put it over here. This is, um, capital T. Oh, I wonder if it'll fit. E, get that O in there. Come on now. Poor. There you go. This will be like a little wraparound structure, won't it? Or toys. Nudge this over a little bit. Oh, not the S, but the I. There we go. Or toys. Ah, come on. Come on. There we go. Tavern. like it. It has a very, uh, the, the word tavern always has a very warm feeling to me. I always think cozy when I think of tavern. There's a, there is a certain warmth with that word. So we've got, uh, we've got the Galapagos Grotto and the Tortoise Tavern. Tortoise? 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 Tortoise Tavern. Coming together for the, uh, of course, the Galapagos Giant Tortoise in Darwin's Den. Um... Let me just fix this a little bit, though, because uh, some of this is bothering me more than I would like. Or maybe I'll just invest time in that some other time. Because there's, uh, there's a lot to get done today that I want to make sure that we are able to uh, to get done. There we go. Galapagos Grotto. The giant G and the giant T just, you know, again, playing into the, the whole size thing. Having some fun with, uh, fun with letters. Cool. Let's make sure, though, that Galapagos Grotto is properly named Galapagos Grotto. There we go. And of course, this entire section is Darwin's Den. And to those of you that uh, actually don't know the connection or haven't made the connection, Darwin is a reference to, uh, you know, Darwin himself, for whom we can... We, 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 the, the, the topic of... I'm trying to figure out the best way to, to, to phrase it, but evolution, natural selection, all that stuff. Darwin, the HMS Beagle, and... Uh, and his trips to the uh, Galapagos Islands, the the archipelago, is uh, huge in our understanding of our, uh, you know, of our natural world. So uh, this sort of acts as a bit of a learning opportunity for anybody who's not sure about, you know, well, what does Darwin have to do with this part of the world, or what's the connection between Darwin's den and uh, and the animals that you're seeing here? Well, there you have it. There you have it. And actually, that segues us quite nicely, I think, into the next conversation which is about which animal we're adding next. And folks, after a fair bit of deliberation, there was an excellent set of comments a couple of sessions ago now that set me down a path that I'm super <laughs> pumped to, uh, to explore. The next animal is actually going to be the, if I can spell it right, Aldabra giant tortoise. I think this works on so many levels. Because that giant tortoise is going to be added right over here. Through Darwin's Den, into the Africa section, because it is from Africa. More on that in just a moment. It ties into so many things because it is, you know, a very similar looking animal. I mean, it, uh, there, there are similarities, obviously. We're going through Darwin's Den. We're talking about, you know, different like species and subspecies. Like there's so many, uh, it, it connects, on, it touches on so many levels that uh, I can't help myself from uh, from doing that. Uh, and it is, again, it is an African animal as well. If we take a look at the natural habitat, it is from the Seychelles. I'm pretty sure is how you say that, Seychelles, um, which is, yeah, it, it is a tiny, t well, it's not one island, yeah, unless I'm horribly mistaken. It's actually a set of islands. It's an archipelago um, right next to, you know, Africa and the massive island of Madagascar as well. So, uh, that's going to be our next African animal that we're introducing into the uh, 
into the space, and I feel like it's going to be very different from what one would expect of a quote-unquote typically, like a, a typical African uh, enclosure and whatnot, uh, because again, they're, you know, they're from this island chain of the Seychelles, so very excited for that. Again, it touches on a few different levels of, uh, a few different touch points. We've got the whole, the whole Darwin connection. We go from tortoise to tortoise. Uh, and, and again, we are finally now, you know, adding more African animals. Uh, so without further ado, without any more rambling, let's go ahead and take a look at the Zoopedia entry for the Aldabra giant tortoise. Uh, let's discuss it a little bit and then we dive into our time lapse. Now, just for posterity, this is the Aldabrachelis Aldebrachel gigantea. Whereas the Galapagos giant tortoise is the Chelonoidus nigra. I want to see, um, I, mean, I, taxonomy was always one of my like weak points in biology class. I'm going to be honest. I found it fascinating, but I couldn't remember. I couldn't wrap my head around remembering all of the names and you know, the whole by rote learning is not my thing. Uh, Aldabra. So let's see. Yeah. Same order, same family, different genus yeah uh so again class order family genus uh and then no th yeah that's 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 the whole set right uh and that helps you classify to those of you that don't know what taxonomy is that helps you classify animals uh every animal of a certain class has certain things in common every animal of a certain order has certain things in common family genus down the line and that's how you kind of separate that's how you can tell one animal type from a different animal type simply by... That's how you can get a general idea of what an animal might be like based on its uh, taxonomy. For example, if you look at a tiger, you know, mammalia, okay, it's the mammal class. Uh, genus Panthera, you can find other animals in, in, in a similar... Uh, you can find similarities in any one of these steps that apply across the board. Um, so, I mean, like, I'm trying to think of a good example that won't have me scrolling around the entire thing. Okay, like, okay, great. The African wild dog. Um, Canaday. If we go over to our wolves, unless I'm mistaken, yeah, Canaday. And the timber wolf as well. Canaday. Anyway, this is not a biology lesson. I don't know why I'm letting myself get distracted by that. I uh, just thought I'd point out. I think the reason why I'm letting myself get distracted by that is because it is so, in like, inherent to the conversation we're having with, you know, Darwin's Den and why I feel like they're the natural next selection. Huh? Oh my god. I'm upset at myself for that one. Oh, all right. Aldabra giant tortoise. Aldabrachelis giganti. G Gigantia? Gigantia? Listen. I don't speak this. Okay. Uh, I have my limitations as well. So they are vulnerable. Population in the wild is 152k. That is uh, not, uh, not that great. Not terrible, but not that great. They are just vulnerable. You know, at least it's not... Uh, critically endangered or anything, but uh, we're here to save them. Endemic to the Seychelles Islands, an Indian Ocean archipelago east of the African coast, the Aldabra giant tortoise, or the Ald... Okay. Uh, is a reptilian species capable of growing to extremely large sizes. Males average between 440 and 550 pounds, while the smaller females still average between 266 and 350 pounds. What do you mean still average? Their shells are a dull gray-brown color made up of peaked gratinous plates, and their skin is scaly and gray. Historically, Aldabra giant tortoises have been hunted for their meat and oil. Between the 17th and 19th centuries, sailors would capture and keep them on their ship. They were an excellent food supply, as the large creatures provided plenty of meat and required very little maintenance while at sea. You'll find some similarities between this and the Galapagos giant tortoise. Uh, as a result of this hunting, the Aldabra giant tortoise is the only one of the 18 giant tortoise species that has not gone extinct due to over-exploitation. Ah, controlled hunting, I guess. In order to bring the species back from the brink of dying... Hold on. As a result of this hunting, it is the only one of the 18 giant tortoise species that has not gone extinct due to over-exploitation. In order to bring the species back from the brink of dying out... It's just the paragraph structure here is a little weird, because you talk about... Talk about how they're a good source of food, how they're hunted, and then maybe it should be despite the hunting, they are one that hasn't gone extinct due to overexploitation. Anyway, in order to bring the species back from the brink of dying out, captive breeding efforts have meant more giant tortoises have been bred and released back into the wild. All those tortoise, 
while those tortoises set free are protected by conservation efforts. Great, wonderful. Um, over to the natural habitat. Again, Seychelles, it's an archipelago in the area, uh, and they are a tropical biome. Don't need too much of a boundary. Similar, I think, space requirements to the uh, Galapagos giant tortoises, but the 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 area itself is going to look and feel very different. I'm so excited. I, I'm so excited. Um, hopefully, I can pull off what I have in mind. All right, group size one to four, uh, one male, three females. Fair enough. Dominance none. Promiscuous mating system and neutral relation with humans. Guests can enter the habitat, but the last time we tried that with the Galapagos tortoises didn't really work out. So we'll maybe try and avoid that over here as well. Three point five to three point three feet. 119 years is the life expectancy, and uh, yeah, 495 pounds or 308 pounds. 25 is sexual maturity, virility at death, and 2 to 8 offspring per mating event. 8 months gestation, 24 month interbirth, and reproduction is very easy. 25 years, 119 years life expectancy. Yeah, another, another long, long living set of animals here. Social needs Aldabra giant tortoises are solitary but will tolerate other tortoises. Males may be aggressive towards other males during the mating season. Reproduction. If a male and female encounter each other during the mating season, the male will invariably attempt to mate by... I just love the word choice. Invariably attempt to mate by climbing on her back. The female may accept this by remaining still or reject it by walking away or raising herself high on her legs so that the male slips off. If the female acquiesces, she will carry... Again, acquiesces. I... I I'm, I genuinely, I enjoy the word choice. Uh, it's very indicative. Uh, if the female acquiesces, she will carry her fertilized eggs with her for 110 to 250 days until laying a clutch of them in a shallow nest. In the wild, the clutch will number between 4 and 14 eggs, while in captivity, this number increases to between 9 and 25. Okay. In both cases, however, only 30 to 50% of these eggs will hatch. When the hatchlings emerge, they live completely independently and will reach sexual maturity between 20 and 30 years old. Man, complete independence right from hatching. We have some similar enrichment items. I suppose the tortoise research helps a lot from the Galapagos tortoises, but of course, we will need to do some for their food and for better learning opportunities. No interspecies enrichment and world records. I mean, those are uh, not relevant to our uh, situation right now, obviously. So... There is, uh, yeah, there, there, I, I've got some big plans. Uh, hopefully we're able to, I need to make sure that I'm able to loop back appropriately because again, the plan is to, um, well, I've got a couple of plans, but uh, the plan is to blend from this more jungle forested area into, I guess what'll be more of, this is again, based on a comment from the previous episode, more kind of savanna plains areas and maybe the safari shouldn't be through the whole thing, but more through the savanna plains area because that's typically where you see safaris. Um, I, I, I don't I don't know if I've ever seen a jungle for safari or a, or a forest safari. Uh, memory doesn't serve me well right now, but uh, but yeah. So uh, got some big plans. This is the uh, initiation of those plans, and hopefully we can transition very nicely from uh, from South America into Africa. Um, Again, with a bit of a nuclear option, if you will, hoping to see a massive, massive step, a giant leap for, uh, for tortoise kind and for Elite Zoo South. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I feel like that's the second time I said that in the last five minutes. Without further ado, number three, it's time lapse time. All right, folks, I am extremely excited to share this one. Honestly, I'm, uh, if I was pumped going into this episode, I'm like doubly pumped heading out of it and now going back and recording the time lapse. Just um, like I alluded to, it's a big step. It's very different from anything we've done before, actually. Uh, and I mean, you know, between Elitsu South and Elitsu North. And I think, I could be wrong, but I think it's headed in the right direction. Uh, very, very close to done. Uh, all the really broad strokes are 100% done, I would say. Uh, a lot of the mid strokes, the medium level strokes, I would say, are also 100% done. Uh, it's just a lot of the minor detailing and stuff that I want to go in and spend some time on. So uh, that's, I think, the, the next step. And I think that's where we're going to go uh, next session. But we do a lot of work today. And I am really, again, just really excited to share. Uh, so the idea here, well, you'll see a couple of things. Uh, for one, I am building this kind of loop. I'm continuing the loop. And I will spend some time trying to figure out exactly how this loop is going to uh, come up the level 
literally like the, the plateau level of the rest of the Africa section, uh, how we're going to make that happen and how we're going to uh, make it a very interesting space. I actually want to play around with quite a few things that I haven't played around with before uh, in this uh, transitionary space. I want to try and do some more interesting stuff with uh, with an extremely kind of uh, a natural um, uh, approach and whatnot. I I've, got, I've got a lot of plans, a lot of long-term plans for the area, but today uh, I'm sort of trying to carve out the overall shape, the overall transition from, again, South America to Africa, uh, but also I am playing on a very unique aesthetic. I think I mentioned this before the time lapse, but uh, I, I wanted to do something here that we're probably not going to see uh, potentially anywhere else in the zoo, uh, may maybe somewhere else in the zoo, but but definitely I don't think anywhere else in the uh, Africa section at the very least. And that is uh, we're building a bit of a, a beach uh, type area. Um, Seychelles, the Seychelles. I always I've always known it as the Seychelles, uh, but I'm almost certainly definitely wrong. Um, so, but do excuse me if I if I fall back to old habits here and there. Uh, but it, it it is it's got. Uh, I mean it's. Oh, beautiful it's absolutely gorgeous uh you know as as i guess one can expect from that kind of a serene island uh nation uh, archipelago nation or, or or what have you uh perfect like vacation spot that kind of a thing you know blue waters as far as the eye can see beautiful trees beautiful beaches that kind of stuff so i really wanted to touch on that and the uh you know the, the prevalence i guess of water when you're an island um nation or island chain and, and all that so uh definitely playing that up a fair bit and uh, really focusing on on that aspect and that angle of uh, of the seychelles now uh, interesting fact i mean up until relatively recently relatively speaking uh, i mean like the age of exploration uh, if i'm if i'm not mistaken it was during the age of exploration that uh, these islands were first settled um i forget exactly uh, what order it was in, I, I believe... Ooh, my history's a little fuzzy here. I believe... Was it Vasco da Gama who, who discovered... Who was the first European to discover them? Um, before uh, European settlers, it was uninhabited, though it had been visited previously. I believe there were some tombs and, and stuff belonging to uh, some of the other uh, subcultures in the area. Uh, potentially even uh, some from uh, Oceania. Uh, so some people from from Oceania might have uh, visited or or stopped at this island chain, um, but it's 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 in its inhabitation is a relatively recent thing, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so trying to to build this like serene um, beach type space uh, for the tortoises, even they, they don't swim, they don't spend a lot of time in water. Uh, so the idea is we're going to be using that water as a bit of a barrier. We're also going to be using the uh, shift in terrain as a bit of a barrier and stuff like that as well. Uh, but that's where the uh, the inspiration, the idea, and all that has come from is is this like uh, beautiful island uh, with beautiful beaches, uh, trying trying to do a mostly untouched vibe. And I say mostly. Uh, I think you'll see why uh, I say mostly. Uh, but I, I want it to feel very, uh, very natural. And we're going to add waterfalls. We're going to have flowing water. You can see I'm trying to build a whole river network up top over here as well. I did get a little distracted. Uh, I did get a little distracted by, um, by the, uh, <laughs> by by the space around the enclosure and by the conversation of the uh, connection to the greater kind of Africa section. Uh, by, by the other thing I want to actually do across the path over here and what I want to do at the top of the stairs, but we also have a ramp to the side, so it is still accessible. Uh, I have some ideas for how I want to do these stairs in an interesting way, uh, which is why I wanted to keep stairs and also have a ramp. I might get rid of the stairs, honestly. I, I'm not sure yet. I'm not uh, settled there yet, uh, but, you know, it's a common sight to have stairs as well as a ramp. Uh, to, to meet accessibility needs and also create like a visual thing, which I try to kind of want to try and experiment with here. A lot, lots of experiments in my mind. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know where this energy is suddenly like this list, like new set of ideas, I guess, has suddenly come from. But I think I just kind of woke up today and was like, I got a bunch of new ideas I want to try. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm excited to try them. Hopefully I'm able to execute them properly. Uh, they will be a bit of a challenge for me. Uh, but that's uh, that's part of the fun is uh, is, is being challenged. 
Um, but, uh, but yeah, definitely feeling very, um, like that kind of, well, when new ideas strike like that, at least for me, there is a certain energy that comes with it, which, uh, which I'm, which is really, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm super, I'm super pumped. Uh, I think I've said that like a hundred times now, so I'll try and stop. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I, I am building out a second space over here as well, a different enclosure for something else. Uh... Which we'll touch on later, but um, the uh, the um, main focus. I, I think this is around the time when I realize, okay, I'm wasting too much time on other stuff, uh, and, and it's all probably inconsequential because I don't know how it's all going to come together. So let's go ahead and flatten this and move on, and, and you'll see because because I am me, uh, I'll be like, well, maybe I'll just give it one more, one one more try, one more try, really quickly, uh, eating away at the time that I have to work on the actual you know enclosure itself. So. That's a story of my life, I guess. But I think finally I realized, all right, let's 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 get focused over here. Let's actually get this done so we can get the animal in. Um, because I, I want to make a fair bit of progress over here. I want us to get, you know, fairly far along so that all that's left to do afterwards uh, is is the, you know, the, the finer touches, the, the small things here and there. Um, but yeah, so, you know, putting down rocks, getting the uh, little, um, there's going to be a waterfall over here for one. So building all the little rock um, formations and stuff to make sure that uh, it looks the part using the tropical um biome rock because i feel like it'll give us a nice break in color nice change in color it'll also i feel like it also fits more nicely to the uh, to the region and uh we're using the opportunity of this sudden change in terrain to make the change in rock colors and stuff like that feel a bit more uh fitting as well i think it does the trick i think it'll do the trick quite nicely at least um but yeah so just you know put down some rocks put down some uh uh, pieces for future consideration we are going to do all the visual effects stuff next session as well i don't get to it this session unfortunately uh, but that's partly because i still have a lot of uh, stuff i want to do in time lapse speed uh, that i just couldn't get to today so it'll likely be uh next session's big uh big uh time lapse i guess um progress over here you, you'll see every once in a while now i will take a moment to take a look at some references i, I am looking at the beaches of and the seychelles i feel like it's both i feel like seychelles is the name of the country and the seychelles is the name of the archipelago anyway um looking at references and just trying to find like what the beaches look like and, and finding these like little like kind of rock formations that i'm trying to uh mimic over here using the pieces we do have i feel like it's working well enough um, and then the, the, the big thing, the big challenge for me was the, um, was like the vista, I guess, the, the view. Um, and I mean, I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with this kind of a thing, um, but it, it's sort of typical imagery when you have like a very beautiful beach that goes on for miles upon miles upon miles. It kind of has that curve off in the distance and way off in the horizon, you can see, you know, a line of trees and things like that. So I, I do really want to touch on that. And one thing that I was really struggling with in my head was uh, uh, trees on the beach. For some reason for me, it's just like beaches are this expanse of sand. And I'm just like, how do I, how do I get that blend uh, to happen from, you know, vegetation to sand? Uh, so trying my best over here I, I will need to look at some more references and, and do a better job of of some of this stuff i feel like but again just putting down those broad and medium strokes if you will to uh direct myself in the future uh, and, and constantly looking at references to get an idea of uh, what i'm doing right or wrong and where i could tweak things to make them better uh here just using the australia log pieces i really like the color on them uh i think it matches this kind of beach vibe we're going for it's really kind of uh you know it, it feels uh well, it's literally quite light. It feels very airy as a result. It feels very vacation-y, if you will. Uh, so I dropped a couple of those down to, to build our little barrier over here. And I'm very happy with how that looks as well. And here's the slightest touch of, uh, of human um, presence. Just a little hammock over here. Thought it'd be nice. I don't want to overcomplicate it. No big structures or anything. Uh, you know, you, the animal, nature, and a hammock. Just a small touch of uh, human interference, if you will. Um, now... Again, uh, I'm very curious to know, as always, what y'all think about my approach to this space. Um, it is definitely 
like I said before, very different from anything I've done before. So there's obviously going to be room for uh, for improvement. But I, I'm, I'm really, even, even now as we're putting down these trees and stuff, you can see how it's all coming together. Once it all does come together, that view that I keep returning to between the, uh, between the uh, palm trees is, uh, in, in my opinion, it really kind of hits that vibe that I was going for. Uh, even now as I'm kind of going back, yeah, you can see constantly pulling back and using that as my reference point because that's where guests are going to come in uh, and, and look at the animal. Um, but for now, I think that's it for the time lapse, folks. Just a little bit of minor adjustments here and there. Lots of work to do next session as well, but super pumped for this one. Please let me know what y'all think as well. As always, I look to you for your opinions and feedback and thoughts as well. All right, folks, we are back from the time lapse and my oh my, was that not a wild one? I'm, uh, you know what? I'm actually really excited for what's to come here. Um, it is, I mean, hopefully y'all agree. Maybe, may, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like it is drastically different from any of the other spaces we've built so far and probably drastically different from any of the other spaces that our Africa enclosures will have. Um, just, I don't know, ever potentially. I'm sure I touched on my inspiration and my thought process during the time lapse, so I'm not going to belabor those points and go over them all over again, but I am really quite pleased with uh, how this space stands out, how it completely changes the geography of our zoo as well. Once more, you know, just just trying my best, I guess, to to to, to try different things with every kind of step I take. Well, what it makes sense, what it makes sense. And I felt like in, in this particular case, it made sense. Like I said, kind of throwing back to some of the drastic measures I took from time to time, uh, particularly one time at Elite Zoo North. Personally, I'm quite pleased with where it sits right now. It's not done, I will, I will say that. Um, but, uh, I think, uh, I think what I need to do is I do need to do a little bit more research. Um, I was fairly confident going in with the, uh, references and stuff that I had. I'm pretty happy with, you know, how I use those, but I definitely need to do a bit more reference hunting, uh, to just finalize a couple of things. And then we will need to come in with some, uh, special effects and stuff as well and finishing off some of these rock facades. But the, I mean, it's not just the skeleton that's here. I feel like a fair bit of the meat is on this enclosure as well. Uh, just a matter of getting the animal in here now and making sure they're able to navigate the appropriate amount of space. Uh, and yes, just to, to clarify, folks, I mean, the animal will not be able to, you know, venture into all of the water all the way through or anything like that. But that's not the intent. Anyway, the intent is to uh, uh, have a bit of a, you know, a bit of scenery. And hopefully, and I do believe this amount of land will be enough for them. Uh, but worst case scenario, we have so much water we can expand into if we need to. Um, now, I, I wasn't going to mention this. I don't think I mentioned this during the time lapse, but I think I will mention this now uh, in case you're all wondering what's going on over here. Or do I leave it a mystery? Hmm. Yeah, let's leave it a mystery. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get the animals in over here. Uh, really excited for, uh, well, for this whole space, actually. Um how, how things will kind of pair up and, and, and work over here uh, and even further over here as we transition into the, you know, higher uh, higher uh, plateau of the Africa section. I, I'm, I'm enjoying this challenge of going from, you know, low to, to low to low to even lower, you know, with the water over here and then back up. I'm, I'm, I'm really quite enjoying uh, how this is all coming together. But any, any more any, any more yammering and we'll never get the animal in. So let's go ahead and get the animal in, shall we? Uh, over to the uh, animal market. We got to get our uh, Aldabra giant tortoise. Ho hopefully, oh god. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get Afia first before they get picked up. Not enough storage space. I deserve that. I deserve that. Time to... Uh, let somebody go. We're going to go ahead and let... Uh, oof, we have so many high-quality animals. We're going to go ahead and let uh, Rathu here go. Um, I guess it has to be a quick trade. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, confirm that. And I guess we got to move these uh, one at a time. Back to the animal market. Please tell me you haven't been picked up. Okay, great. Oh, done. Fancy. Uh, just looking at the gold as well as the, obviously, the, um, the, uh, the coloration. Uh, let's go ahead and move you over to quarantine. Over here, please, and, oh, thank you. There we go. And while that's happening, while that's happening, I really hope people find this space magical, and that way, uh, you know, 
it, it'll feel, it'll feel like a little bit of, a little bit of, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Aldabra Kadabra. Mmm! <laughs> I know that was pretty bad, but honestly, it's okay. Not hurting anybody over here. Over to the males as well. Oh my lord. Kicking off the weekend on a high note here. Uh, some really good options over here, actually. Really, really interesting options. I, I, one, one albino is enough. Let's go ahead and get a, uh, a, a quote unquote regular male. Um, though, honestly, some of the best options are the albinos. What's, what's up with that? <laughs> what's up with that? I guess we could pick you up over here. These are like really good stats for 885. And, and it's potent, like, is there a potential for the albinism to drop off? Does the game, like, how does it calculate the likelihood? Um... And in fact, I'm not sure with regards to dominant versus recessive versus you know, like how how albinism pairs off. I'm not familiar enough with that, nor how the uh, game actually models it. But these are these stats are way too good to let up. So let's go ahead and pick you up as well, buddy. All right, of course. Go ahead and hit play. Let's get our uh, first tortoise out of storage. Next session, we have to do a, a trade session, I think. It's it's getting ridiculous. We're at our cap capacity. I just keep uh, postponing it. Come on now. Ratu has been traded out. Can we pick you up now? There we go. Cool. One male, one female. Go ahead and move you. There we go. A couple of clicks over to quarantine as well. And then... We'll be able to push them in at the same time, roughly, give or take. Quarantine. Erica is here. Afia is already here. All right, good, good stuff, good stuff. Um, anyway, where where was I? Uh, apart from making those horrendous puns. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm really quite pleased with this space. I I think uh, I think it'll work quite nicely. I think it's a very huge departure from. Uh, when I said earlier, it's different from anything we've done before. I don't just mean Ilitsu South. I think Ilitsu North as well. We we've never built a space like this. Never built this kind of like beachy touristy kind of a thing um i definitely i mean like we're 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 we're, we're getting there we're getting there we're close we're close uh but if you're familiar with my my style and my approach you'll know that i'm basically never 100 uh, percent satisfied with anything so i'm always gonna just say like yeah we're like 90 percent there uh but i'm i'd love to hear what y'all think because i'm personally quite happy with the with the space but you know maybe i'm wrong and again never hesitate to tell me i'm wrong um, <laughs> uh, but also keep in mind that it's not done yet. There will be so many more little elements we'll have to add to it to bring it to that finish line. But I'm I'm really excited for this one. I'm really excited to uh, like for the challenge, and I've got some plans up over here and over here as well. I'm I'm super I'm super pumped. I'm super pumped. Next session we're gonna do a trade session, uh, but then we're gonna come back over here and work on. I'm gonna say broad strokes. We're gonna work on this area some more, uh, and then I think. I think the session after that, oh, it's, oh, it's going to be tough. Uh, I'm hoping that next time it'll be trade session and and working in this general area. Um, and then the time after that, maybe a new animal. We'll see. We'll see. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Uh, There's a crazy couple weeks coming up for the, uh, for the channel as well. I will be tweeting out updates as well as putting up a community post update relatively soon just to let you all know what's going on in life in general there's a lot that's going to happen over the next couple weeks uh, so i just want to mention that as well briefly right now nothing to worry about or anything just in case any of you are uh, uh the type to worry like i am <laughs> uh everything is great everything is good but uh just some uh just some things coming up over the next couple weeks uh let's go ahead and pause it just occurred to me that i actually need to you know set out this uh, barrier over here fortunately Fortunately, uh, it should be relatively simple. Go ahead and make that a null as well. I need to spread this out. It completely slipped my mind that I have to do this. <laughs> Just by putting the little pieces down, I was like, oh yeah, okay, all done. That's not how that works, party. Did you know that by now? Only been playing this game forever. I don't know if... I mean, actually, you know what? They probably can get up over here. Yeah, they, all, they can almost definitely get up over here. But we're going to go ahead and adjust this a little bit. Reduce this length a touch. 
this way. There we go. By the way, if you hold down Z when you're trying to put down a piece, it will uh, allow you to adjust the, the curvature. I've, I've been asked that before and I keep forgetting to answer that question. Uh, but that's how that's how you do that. Uh, I think this should work. Blunt a bit more over here. There we go. Now we can crank that up. And again, we don't want to go too far out. We don't need to go too far out. We don't want all that vegetation out there to be included uh, into the calculations and whatnot. Pull this back over here. Pull you back over here. Gotta loop this back up now. I think that works, yeah. And then... I don't know where that actually is in three-dimensional space. There we go. Okay, over there. Move button. Ever at the right spot. There we go. That ought to do the trick. Cool. Back to quarantine. Let's go ahead and get the two of you picked up. And let's move you over to this new space, for which, by the way, of course, as always, I will turn to you for name suggestions. All right. Unpause. Uh, hopefully they'll enjoy this space. I do need to get our vets working on them as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at our staff really quickly over here. We have some uh, leveling up to do. We have a fair bit of leveling up to do, in fact. Go ahead and get on that right away. Make sure these guys are working at maximum efficiency. Oops. Good, we're good, we're good. Quarantine is full. That's okay. I think um, our, our little kangaroo might also be ready for uh, for the move. Okay, all good. Actually, we have a couple more people. Might as well just get everybody up to five stars, right? Uh, by the way, there is some concern I saw in the comments about our um, financial situation. I think we'll be fine. Every once in a while, things are a little expensive, but uh, I think overall we're probably okay. If not, we'll uh, we'll course correct. We have we have a little bit of a we have a fair bit of wiggle room actually, so we'll we'll be able to course correct. Get you over into Kangaroo Kuyang. Thank you very much. Quite a few alliterations in this zoo actually. Quite a few. <laughs> all right, all the way over here at the end. Did I see someone shivering? Uh, also, I've, I've received some really good suggestions about sprucing this space up a fair bit more. Uh, so I'm also very excited to revisit uh, the, uh, the the space over here to, to add a bit more life and, and, and vibrance to the area. I've got, yeah, I mean, I'm... I'm, I'm Really excited for a lot of the stuff that's coming up. Um, and I'm hoping to get a good spread of, you know, animal edition as well as decorative work. Uh, try to find that perfect balance as always um, without getting myself, letting myself get pulled in, in one direction back to back to back episodes. And hopefully once the animal arrives, guests will be making their way over. That's my one concern right now with this space is that... Um, Guests might uh, might be a while before guests start to really kind of flood this area because it's so close to the edge of the zoo. Well, rather because it is the edge of the zoo until it loops back, uh, guests might be a little hesitant to um, to yeah come through. So that that is something I'm a little worried about. Not gonna lie, but I think we'll be okay in due time. There we go. Back to back arrivals over here. Good stuff. Guests, hopefully, we'll start exploring. Oh my god, it's a double-headed turtle. Well, double-headed tortoise, sorry. <laughs> Habitat has no keepers assigned to it. Right, of course. Uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and assign... Alright, well, a couple things to do. Work zone. Go ahead and get um, this into South America again for now. Come on now. There we go. Things getting unassigned is really frustrating. There we go. Just because it is the closest thing, I suppose. Uh, so that ought to do a trick. Ought to do a trick. Ought to do the trick. Guys, in here. Um, go ahead and get Debra food. I'm gonna have them eating up over here. Uh, let's go ahead and get them. Right, I need to give them some uh, some hard shelter. Right, give them a little bit of hard shelter over here. Make this like a hiding spot. Head straight for the water here. But what are you guys up to? Whoops. Oh. I can definitely build a little uh, rock 
um, overhang kind of a thing over here, I think. Rotate you a little bit. Okay, not, not exactly what I was expecting. Hold on, be before, I, before I forget, there's like so much to do right now. You are able to get to the water. It looks like, yes, you are able to escape over here as we knew would be the case. Go ahead and make that adjustment. Before it's too late. Over. We'll do a little garden space over here or something. That was the plan originally. We just expand its uh, size a little bit, I suppose. Move you over here. There we go. Go all the way across that. Okay. Oh. I really like the uh, the coloration of the Australia log pieces. I feel like they... Uh, I feel like they fit this aesthetic as well, just like kind of sandy, beachy kind of a thing. Um, so very partial to them for this area. Oh, go ahead and... Got to prevent the escape before we look at... I mean, we have a, a spot for food, they've got access to water. Uh, so all the, uh, the bare necessities have been taken care of. there as opposed to control x this to do the trick and then for the rest of it over here i'd like to like use rocks and stuff to blend it into the space a bit better yeah that's what i'm talking about there we go there we go that auto block off the escape and again we will be you know touching it up a fair bit more a fair bit more yep blocked off locked off everything's good everything's awesome wonderful do you like the space no hard shelter we're gonna fix that Need a little bit of long grass and a little less soil. Okay. Okay, that works for me. A little more long grass, a little less soil. Um, long grass. I was hoping, actually, for long grass, but I just wasn't sure. Because I feel like long grass makes sense over here. I haven't been, uh, been on a beach in so long. I'm trying to forget what they might look like. And like a little bit of... Yeah, there we go. Um, how you feel? Need a lot more long grass, actually. Or just a little bit. Down over here. They need more short grass as well. Alright, not a problem, not a problem. En enough long grass. Let's go ahead and get the uh, short grass in. A little bit further in. There we go. Too much soil. Now, where is their soil? That soil? That's not soil, that's sand. Um, get all this stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and make that rock more fitting. There. Go. A little fair bit of soil. Still, all this stuff over here. Make this into sand. Oh, intensity at 100, please. There we go. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, I guess this was all soil. Okay, great. Wonderful. Water should be clean as well. Let's go ahead and build that hard shelter up. That's a that's a necessity. That's crucial. Habitat cleanliness. Is this the llamas? Llama lane. As always. Oh, my lord. Gotta get more keepers in here, I guess. Gotta get more keepers in here. I always forget. Right. Right here. Cool. Tuta's about to die of old age. I mean, Tuta's been with us for a very long time, hasn't she? For a very long time. But that, did, that didn't take any time. <laughs> Compared to usually how, how drawn out it is, that was very quick. Alright. Back over here. Go ahead and get, uh... Hmm. I think you'd make a good piece for this. Yep. You over like so. So. I don't know if that's enough room. That, that should be enough room for them. Go ahead like so. So again, this is pretty close to uh, where the guests will be, which 
makes for you know a better viewing opportunities while they're resting. They're fairly their 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 relations with humans is neutral, right? Like they're not shy claims the game. So hopefully with a little bit of ambient music or something, there'll be uh, ambient music <laughs> with some ambient sounds. Sorry, they'll be okay uh, to have people nearby. Ambient music. Um, yeah, hopefully that'll be okay. Let's see if this actually works for them. Where are you? I hope they don't hide over here all their all all, all through the day. Um, not counting that as hard shelter, are you? Ooh, are you stuck down there? You are stuck down there. How did that happen? How did you get yourself? Oh, that's cleverness. You're not stuck down there. Just chilling. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and push this back a little bit. The intensity and the size too. I don't know if that's going to make much of a difference. All right. Be a bit more drastic over here, I suppose. All good. Build like a little cave type of a thing. I don't mind that. Actually, I feel like I'm gonna have to reduce how readily they're able to get to the uh, the edge of the water, or I'll need to bring the edge closer to um, where the guests are gonna be. Because I, I need to make sure the animal is up here more often than just when it's eating and sleeping. Um, otherwise we're going to have some trouble. How does that work for you? How does that work for you? There we go. 78%. So we'll still need to upgrade this a little bit. Maybe, maybe make this area a bit of a... Ooh, actually, you know what? That might be quite nice. That might work nicely as well. Like, we'll have to dip this down a bit more. But, but I don't mind the idea, that kind of a thing. Let's go ahead and flatten the foundation a little bit. There we go. Flatten to foundation. Like I said, flatten the foundation, which is technically not wrong. Technically correct is the best kind of correct. Something like that. We could get another big block over here or something. Make this blend in more nicely. Where'd you go? Is she just going to sit there all day? 100% hard shelter. A little bit too much sand. Okay. Add some more rock, I suppose. Um, here would make most sense. And over here, I suppose, as well. Hmm. We add some more short grass up over here. Try and take away from the sand. I don't want it to be too rocky, thing. Go, there we go. Come on now. There we go. Larger, there. Just, just a soft um, intensity. Cool, okay. Now, I imagine they look bored. I mean, of course they look bored. Let's go ahead and get them some toys. Nothing like a small, colorful ball to get you excited. Pop you down over here, just for now. And we can get an herb scent marker enrichment item as well. Just to pull them up into these spaces, right? Uh, let's go ahead and duplicate you as well. Pop you down over here. Go. And smooth this out. Go. Make sure you can actually get down there. I think that's a nice cozy spot to, to check the animal out from, right? See them over there. You can see them over there. And while they're eating, they've got their toys over here. Where is the other one? <laughs> a little bit of enrichment. We need to get them some food enrichment as well. Uh, the dog ball, the block of frozen fruit. Up over here. But no, for real though, where is the... Is that... Oh, wow. Good uh, good camo there, buddy. Hiding out over here. Completely not its natural coloration at all. So the fact that we have one... Okay, now a couple more coming through. Checking them out from a 
very safe distance. We're moving through. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. I mean, obviously, there's still a ton of work to do over here. Um, donation bins, trash cans, benches, all sorts of stuff. You know what? I mean, yeah, next session, like I said, we're probably going to be uh, working on the area over here. Um, hopefully. Hopefully rather efficiently. The animals are happy. They're happy with their terrain. Lots of room. But, again, I mean, a lot of that room is water that they can't actually use. So don't let that... Uh, I'll let that fool you. Uh, what I, I could, again, I could really reduce the area that they have access to, and that way they're kind of forced into a smaller space. I'm actually tempted to do that. I feel like it would work a fair bit better um, for the guests. It would net us some more money, and then I got to put down, again, you know, trash cans, donation bins, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm hoping, oh yeah, look at that, a lot more room for coverage too. Great, excellent, because I was, I'm really hoping to like spruce this area up a fair bit more. Get some more of these trees and stuff going. Make this area just come to life a lot more. Um, so I'm definitely glad to see that that is an option. Let's see what else we're, we're talking about here? Good stuff. I'm uh, I'm 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 really pleased with this space. Um, I'm pleased with what it represents and what it uh, might end up. Uh, what what I think it'll end up looking like and feeling like. Uh, I I do all 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 jokes and uh, and and puns aside. It just looks like a little rock. All jokes and puns aside, I do feel like this is a uh, pretty, pretty um, magical-looking space. Um, already, it's got all the, uh, the 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 workings of it, I guess. Like the view from over here, I think it's quite nice. I think it's quite a nice. Uh, nice space but yeah definitely needs a, a fair bit of work we'll we'll focus on this i think next session we'll get some more vegetation in get the waterfalls and stuff all working get the rocks built up uh make the water a bit more busy over here as well i'm i'm, I'm super excited i hope you all are as well but folks this is where we're going to call it a session uh i hope you enjoyed if you did you know what to do let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below as always it makes a massive difference in how i approach content on the channel what i do more or less of how i go about doing it what i do when i do how i do y'all know the drill by now um but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm trying to sort of think out loud, I guess, figure out what's uh, what's next. I think overall we're doing all right if I take a look at the financial management, actually. Um, hang on. Right, before I forget, because I did forget and I will forget again, uh, Michelle Weedman, let's go ahead and get you working on the El Dabra giant tortoise. And everybody else is training. And the other animal that we want to focus on right now, I suppose I could get uh, Lucy Meg working on the llamas. Just to help us with extra, you know, research points and stuff like that. Uh, help us with extra education rate and whatnot. Um, but financially, I think we're not doing too, uh, not doing too bad. We're, yeah, we, I mean, we spent a lot of money with, with construction and stuff, right? Like, let's not forget, had a couple of refunds because of escaped animals. Um, but, uh, yeah, like 27k was spent last year and uh, we still made a profit. So uh, I, I think we're doing okay still. Uh, I think we're doing okay still. But, uh, yeah, next session... Oh, man, look at that. From all the way over here, you can see... I do wonder what it would look like when you're up over here. When you look back, you know there's something going on over there. Oh, and I cannot wait for... I mean, again, hopefully what I have planned here uh, works out the way I intended to uh, work out. Folks, as I was saying, I hope you enjoyed this session. If you did, let me know down below. And uh, I'm excited to, uh, to continue our adventures over in... O over at the Africa Connection. I guess that's what we can call that, the Africa Connection back there. Uh, let me know your name suggestions for the enclosure itself, actually. Uh, but yeah, on that note, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.